morning. Welcome back to All Right, What's Next? How's it going today? Hey, uh, so I bought this silicone rubber mold making freaking material uh, for a different project. I don't know if I'll have that one freaking posted before this one, but either way, whenever you use this stuff, as soon as you crack the seal, this stuff's got a relatively short uh, shelf life. Not entirely sure how long it is. It just says that it has a short shelf life on the freaking box. So I need to come up with ways to use it up. And I made a dice video on how to make uh, resin dice and had, you know, multiple, multiple failures in the, in the, the, uh, the process. Everything kept getting air pockets in there. I was not overly pleased with the freaking the molds that I had. Uh, I want to try and make my own mold. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to start out with a... Uh, a D10 percentile dice. And by percentile dice means this is the, it counts up by tens from 10 all the way up to uh, 100, 0, 0, whatever. And you roll this in conjunction with another D10 that has just the singles 1 through 10 on there, and then you can get your percentile when you're freaking playing a a role-playing game, tabletop board game, or whatever. So we need a way to suspend this dice in this cup. This cup is going to be my mold. Um, I picked this dice because it is just a bland, yellow, uninteresting dice. If I damage it or whatever, I don't really give two shits about it. So I have this little tiny piece of uh, styrene rod, polystyrene rod. What it is, it's just a two millimeter friggin' styrene rod. They come in uh, with it like 18 inch sticks, six sticks per pack, $4. I got this at uh, uh, Hobby Lobby, but you can get this stuff at any, any hobby store, anywhere like that. And we're gonna just take a little chunk of that that piece, we're gonna super glue it onto that dice, then we're gonna hot glue it down into that freaking uh, Dixie cup. That way it's supported. It, that way the dice will be floating in the center of the, uh, the silicone when we pour it. At no point in time do I have any clue what I'm doing here. I've never made one of these. We're just gonna wing it. So I've got just some Loctite super glue, CA glue. Uh, this is a Instaset. Uh, it's an activator for freaking super glue. Super glue is called CA glue cyanoacrylate. I think this stuff, uh, instead of super glue taking 30, 40, 50 a minute to freaking set up and cure where you're sitting there holding it, it damn near you know, instantaneously freaking cures it. So you just put your blob of silicone on or blob of freaking super glue on, stick it on where you want it to go, and then you spray it with that, and it will cure really, really fast. So now we just need to figure out the best location to stick this freaking rod where we've got plenty of room where we won't mess with any numbers, and I think right there in the number 10. So it'll just, it'll be suspended like that then. So we'll just put a little dab Super glue on there. Let's see, where'd that number 10 go? That might have been too much. Yeah, it's set. There. Now we've got our dice stuck to the styrene rod. So now we need to clean that crap off of there. I don't know how quick it dries. Let me get a towel. Now we need to adhere this down into the center of the Dixie cup. And we'll do that with, with the hot glue. Which I've got over here dribbling all over everything. There we go. 
it's freaking suspended nicely in the center of the cup. Now we're going to put some uh, mold release in there, and then we'll mix up our silicone. Silicone rubber needs to be stirred prior to use, which is kind of a pain in the ass. If you're going to use the same stir stick, this side goes in part A, this side goes in part B. Otherwise, you might uh, cause a chemical reaction to them. And you'll end up coming back and finding out part B's already freaking got some portions of it set up in there. I think, I don't know, fuck, like I said, I've never done this before. I could just be talking out my ass because my mouth knows it better. Okay. Measure. Let's go. We want to go a little under half. That is too much. Let's dump some of that out. That looks to be about right. A little bit more. There we go. Pretty much spot on. Okay. Now they both go in this container here. All right, that should be mixed up thoroughly enough. Go ahead and we'll pour it. Trying to just circle all the way around the dice, not pour it directly onto it and let it flow in underneath better. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in the pressure pot overnight. I don't know if it needs to be in the pressure pot, but I'm thinking that under pressure, it's going to help void out any air pockets that may be in there. And I think it might also help apply pressure and get the, uh, the rubber, the, the, the resin, rubber, whatever the fuck you call it, into the, uh, the numbers in that and bring out the details better. Okay, so I got my Dixie cup here full of uh, pureed Smurf. It has... Uh, set up over, uh, well, a week, because uh, I had to go back to work. But it is cured! Hallelujah! Now we have to try and extract this thing and turn this uh, embedded, silicone embedded D10 into an actual freaking dice mold, or at least, hopefully. So, with any luck, this will just pop right out of this freaking Dixie cup, because I sprayed the shit out of it with the uh, mold release. So, let's see if it'll freaking pop out of there. Hey, it does. Look at that. Cool. That actually fuck came out nice. You can see the, ah, uh, oh, crap, there's a board on the ground right there. Somebody needs to straighten up their fucking shop. Here's the uh, rubber cement with the uh, little piece of freaking polystyrene rod in it. So now we got to do is see if we can cut down through this thing. Well, let's remove this. Uh... All right, rubber cement is off. There's the styrene rod. It's not exactly centered. What we'll do is we're going to take a, uh, a knife and we're going to cut into there and we're going to try and follow that freaking styrene rod down to the dice. Find that D10 embedded in here somewhere without screwing this mold up royally. I can see the dice. Styrene rod is off. Scrape the slight amount of residue of freaking super glue off. Got my dice. From the looks on the inside of it, it's got nice numbers. So now what we need to do is cut a better channel down into here. So we're going to take 
Take that out. That will act as our additional reservoir to allow freaking resin to drip down into there. You got the dice inside of there, and there is a tiny little channel right there in the center of it to put the resin in. What I got? Disposable one millimeter syringes. I picked these up off of Amazon. They were a grand total of, I think, $10 for 100 of them. So that is what it looks like. It's got uh, the nice little freaking black plunger that goes all the way down in. The tip is relatively small, so hopefully it'll go down into that little hole and push the resin in. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. It's an idea. I'm going to give it a try. Resin is so freaking thick, so it might not work. I don't know. Something I forgot to get, I needed rubber bands to wrap this thing to keep it freaking sealed. I don't have any goddamn rubber bands, but for the time being, what I got is zip ties. Let's see, will one make it all the way around? It will. Make sure it is all perfectly aligned. All right, I'm going to mix up more resin than I actually need to just make the dice, because at the same time, I'm going to freaking whip together a, a pin blank. For this, we're going to go with, oh, there it is, just the basic black. One, I don't know if this is going to work, so I don't really care what the color turns out to be like. Uh, but the pin blank, the pin that I'm designing, I need a, uh, I need an actual black freaking blank to start with. Okay, that's probably stirred. And you know what? I've changed my mind. I don't want to make it all black. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to get another color to make my freaking dice out of. So I'm going to take one of these here all little measuring cups and we're going to just pour an approximate dice amount into there. That looks like about enough to make... Let's add a little bit more just, just to be fucking safe. Huh? I want the dice to turn out. The pen blank, you know, who gives a shit? Yeah, that should be more than enough. So, I want a metallic. Where's my metallics? We're going to make a copper dice. Yeah, that was way more powder than I should have put in there. Now I need the block. That's thoroughly mixed. Let's go ahead and pour that guy in there. Pretty much exactly the amount that I needed. All right, now the great experiment. Can I freaking pull resin into this? Well, shit, yeah, look at that. That tip freaking fits down perfectly into the little channel that I made. With any luck, because I'm doing basically injection molding, that this will also help force out air pockets. Now you probably can't see it on camera, but as I'm shoving this in, you can see air bubbles just popping up out of here left and right. I think the biggest downfall I might have is that the zip ties might not hold the freaking mold the way it's supposed to be held. Yeah, because now I got, I'm going to need to tighten my zip ties a little bit. I got some resin squirting. I think I might need another. Yeah, so there's going to be a hell of a lot of flash on the side of this right here. Make sure that guy's topped off. Oh, there we go. As you can see, it got a little bit of a freaking a seepage line right there, and I had to tighten the uh, zip tie down a little bit. I don't think that would have happened if I would have been able to put like four or five rubber bands up on that because it would have had a nice equal freaking pressure as opposed to the zip ties. So I have a feeling the zip ties might be the downfall of this. 
It's got a huge friggin' reservoir on the top that's going to allow any air pocket or escape resin to drain down into that. Let's get it in the pressure pot. Friggin' we'll come back and check it in the morning. Okay, so it's the next morning. This is that time to cure overnight. So place your bets now to see whether or not I have fucked up yet another project. I really think it should have had rubber bands on here rather than these zip ties. Well, let's see if we can get this to demold. Yeah, so it did not turn out perfect. Uh, I think it's very much because I had them zip ties on there rather than uh, rubber bands. And because the zip tie squeezed down, it put my freaking mold into an odd alignment. I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but there is a ridge coming down over top of number 40. But that is a minor thing. That was just that was a poor alignment on my process on on my part. If I would have freaking spent a little more time making sure that that mold would have been aligned perfectly, and then got it wrapped in rubber bands rather than trying to freaking squeeze down on with uh, zip ties, because I'm pretty sure when I squeeze them zip ties. I shifted that mold and screwed it all up. But it is 100% free of any air pockets. Uh, it has just this little tiny freaking nub on here that you freaking shave off. There's, well shit, there isn't even any mold lines on it other than right here where I screwed it up. So if I would have gotten them freaking mold lines lined up better on that one spot, this would have been absolutely perfect. And I don't think my epoxy is fully cured because it hasn't actually been 24 hours because I think I put this in the, the pressure pot at, what was that, like 2 o'clock yesterday? And it's only 9.30 right now. It still has a little bit of a tacky feel to it, so this probably hasn't fully cured yet. But anyways, that mold freaking worked. It worked quite well. The first try, not a single air pocket on there were them last ones that I did freaking air pocket after air pocket after air pocket it was just a royal freaking nightmare using this with them syringes this is definitely going to be the way to go I'm gonna make another one get me some rubber bands and make 100% sure that it's gonna work and then I can mold up all my other dice alright so after my initial mold that I made of that d10 percentile dice which didn't turn out perfect because I used them goddamn zip ties to try and hold the mold together and it shifted the mold and didn't get even pressure on it and screw the dice up but there wasn't any air pockets or anything in there I was pretty freaking happy with it so off camera I went ahead and I molded up a full freaking set right here are the dice that I used to make the molds out of you got your your D4, D6, D8, D10, D10 percentile, D12, and D20. These are the guys. Was I on camera when I freaking did that? Anyways, if, I, if they weren't on camera, here they are. D4, D6, blah, blah, blah. These are the ones that I use to make the molds out of for everything. Here is my set of molds. I got in this nice little display case to try and keep freaking dust off of them. I just, I got to buy a, a Tupperware container that can put them in. So, you know, I got my D4, D6, D8, D10, D10 percentile, D12, and D20. So I have a mold for each one of these freaking things. So I went and I made a full set of dice. I don't know how well you can see them but they turned out really really well there is almost no defects in them there was a couple of little minor ones here and there uh, which one is I think it was the d12 yeah on the d12 you probably can't see it there was a ridge right here on the number one and when I sanded the ridge off I lost part of the number one but beyond that everything else was pretty good a uh, couple of little screw ups there was tiny tiny little bits of silicone mold that had dropped down inside that I didn't get out that I thought I got so there's little embedded pieces of silicone rubber 
in a couple of the dice, but hey, since these are supposed to be blue anyways, these are uh, Denver Bronco themed dice. So they're blue resin with some orange resin injected into them. Uh, I got blue, white, and orange freaking paint on all the different numbers. Got a blue bag. This is supposed to be a Christmas present for my brother, who is a Denver Broncos fan, for whatever stupid reason. I mean, why would you want to root for the Broncos instead of a real team? Hey, root for the Buccaneers. They're way freaking cooler than the Broncos. Anyways, I am really freaking happy with how these molds turned out. Uh, once again, if you watched my last video uh, with the dice, where I bought the store-bought silicone molds and tried to make dice, and it just fail after fail after fail. Uh, if you make them work, or if you make these own di uh, own molds, and uh, you're gonna do this with your plans on like, hey, I can make dice and I can sell them and make. No, you can't fucking make money. This took me. Forever. There is probably, oh, five hours at least of labor involved in making just the one set of dice. I imagine I can probably streamline that if I get like a polishing kit for my Dremel to try and help polish them up. But even still, this is a very time consuming process. This is something you do to make a gift for somebody, for, you know, like my brother who freaking still plays a lot of the games. Uh, if you're in a gaming group, make them for the people in your gaming group. It's cool. I'm really happy. Uh, making molds is fun. I'm going to try and make a few other things. I'm going to get uh, hopefully get a, a mold making kit here shortly and try and mold up a couple of different other things that aren't in this rubber silicone stuff. But anyways, thanks for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.